This episode is sponsored by Jackery. The last fire of the season, left to fade with the frost of winter. It wasn't long before spring returned to the trail, and with it, a couple old friends. Some of fur, and another of steel. Sanding is officially done. Last year we did the exterior walls and in the fall we did the interior logs and today we finished doing the roof structure which is the final part of the cabin to sand and the most difficult. Uh, there's lots of nooks and crannies to get into but thank goodness we're able to reach most of them with our angle grinders and we used a 60 grit flap disc. We found that it was a great balance between being aggressive enough to do the job quickly but not too aggressive on the logs. So they left them with a really nice finish. Uh, but for the spots we couldn't reach with the angle grinders, we used this handy little tool, which is an air powered one inch belt sander. And I gotta tell you, this thing is a lifesaver. Without this tool, we wouldn't have been able to reach into uh, the tighter spots, especially above the ridge log with anything else. Anyway, I've been getting a lot of questions from people who have been asking us what lights we use for the cabin. And obviously it's nice and bright in here, so the work lights are doing an excellent job. We've got two above us, which are 4,000 lumens a piece, and we've got two lights below the loft. Now, although these are very bright lights, they use only a small amount of power, which is good news for us. They use only 45 watts a piece. So again, excellent work lights. These are only a temporary setup at the moment, but once the cabin is a little bit further along, we're going to wire the cabin up uh, and put some permanent lighting in. We've got an extension cord running up the column and around the, the uh, ridge log, and there, the lights are hanging from there. 
Anyway, now that I've shown you our lighting setup, I wanna show you how we power them, and as well, how we power our tools. Because if you listen carefully, you can't hear a gas generator running in the background, and that's because we use a different power source. So if you join me downstairs, I'll show you what we use. So this little unit is our lithium power station. And honestly, it's been an invaluable piece of technology for us, especially in our off-grid context. Now for full disclosure, this episode is sponsored by Jackery, but I've been using their products for years now and I've really come to rely upon them. Plus, I've been wanting to show you our power setup for a while now, and I figured now was a great opportunity to do that. There are many reasons why we've chosen to transition from a gas generator to this Jackery power station, but the main one is cost. Our gas generator consumes at least $15 to $20 worth of fuel per day, whereas our Explorer 1500 can generate power for free when paired with the Jackery Solar Saga panels. Each panel is 100 watts, and up to four of them can be connected to the power station at a time, which means that by using the sun's energy alone, I can recharge the Explorer 1500 within a matter of hours. I also enjoy using Jackery products because I can take them anywhere. Plus, they run quiet and clean. Unlike gas generators, which constantly rumble away and have to be kept outside the cabin because of the fumes they produce. At 1500 watts, the Jackery power station has a huge power capacity. In fact, we've used it to simultaneously run the cabin lights and both our angle grinders. It's also come in handy during power outages and has the capacity to run almost any household appliance. The Explorer 1500 has an outlet for pretty much everything. Three AC ports, three USB ports, and even a 12 volt DC outlet. If you're interested in learning more about Jackery products, I'll include a link in the description below. Our main goal today is to insulate and seal the floor in preparation for the flooring. But first, a little dusting. We're insulating the floor with 2 inch thick XPS panels, which are shiplap to reduce thermal bridging. These panels have an R value of 10 and are highly moisture resistant. 
which makes them an excellent barrier to cold drafts and moisture from underneath the cabin. Although these panels have a high compressive strength and can carry the weight of the future floorboards, we decided to add a 2x2 every 4 feet for extra support. Although these 2x2s will allow for some thermal bridging, I'm sure the difference is negligible. Definitely worth it for the extra support, in my opinion. We've just about finished insulating the floor and it's looking really good. We've got all the panels in place and all the seams are taped up. So the only thing that's left to do is to spray foam around the perimeter. Now you may have noticed that we've left a two inch gap away from the walls and that's what the spray foam is for. It's to create a perfect seal between the panels and the log wall. Now if you look outside you'll see that it's raining but the temperature is rapidly dropping. So I expect within a couple of hours we're going to get hit with a snowstorm.
Makes no difference for us though, we're going to keep working. Our next job is to head up into the loft and begin flooring up there, which is something I'm really excited about because we've been walking on those temporary plywood panels forever now, and it's going to be nice to get those out of here and a proper floor in place. So with that being said, let's get to work. For the floorboards, we'll be using one inch pine. Two layers in the loft with offset seams and on the main level, one layer of shiplap. I've been looking forward to getting the floorboards in place because I've got a unique idea for how we'll fasten and finish them. In fact, the way I'm envisioning it, I've never seen it done before. So stay tuned. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, be well, and God bless.